So one thing that we've seen uh, you know, show up on our data over the last several years, both at the research farm and across third-party testing, is, is really how important it is to balance pea and zinc, uh, both in the soil and in your tissue for corn and soybean. And this is especially evident as we get into high yield environments and high phosphate environments. You know, the research farm, we have good pea levels in our soil, and then we tend to be very responsive to zinc application, either in early foliar applications or zinc on the planter. And uh, that's partially because, you know, zinc is really important for phosphate utilization in the plant. But we also know that when we have high phosphate levels in our soil, that tends to tie up zinc and then we can become very zinc responsive. And so that's why we tend to be very responsive to zinc on the planter, especially when we're running a phosphorus containing starter fertilizer like a like a 1034O or 1137O. In 2023, we set up uh, research trials across the Corn Belt. We looked at five different locations and responses to starter fertilizer. That first starter fertilizer application that we looked at response to was to uh, the application of five gallons of 1034O to the acre. And across those five locations, we actually saw on average a negative 1.7 bushel to the acre decrease. At three of those five locations, we had that negative response and at one of the five locations there was no yield response there at all but where we actually uh, really started getting positive yield responses to starter fertilizer is when we started adding zinc to it whether it's uh, ends up zinc in furrow mixed with the starter fertilizer or the seed flow zinc applied directly to the seed in the planter box we saw anywhere from a seven to twelve bushel response to those zinc applications uh, because it's so important that we're balancing that zinc with that phosphorus especially when we have that high level of phosphate uh, right along that crop row. So our starter studies really demonstrate how important it is to balance zinc with phosphorus at planting. When we, we know when we have high phosphate levels in the soil that can tend to tie up zinc, but we also demonstrate this in season uh, when we track tissue test levels. We know that balancing pea and zinc is really important for uh, utilization of phosphorus in season. And so when we pull tissue test levels, especially in our high yield environments, we tend to plot pea to zinc together and we know that if we're below, you know, anywhere from 25 to 30 ppm zinc, we tend to be very responsive to in-season zinc applications. Or if that P to zinc ratio in the tissue goes above 120 to 1 in soybean or 150 to 1 in corn, we can be very responsive to in-season zinc applications. The other thing that's really unique with both phosphorus and zinc is that uptake is season long. A high percentage of the P and zinc that's taken up in the crop will actually be partitioned into the grain. It has a very high harvest index and we know it's really important for kernel development late season and so foliar applications of zinc uh, all the way up to about tassel can have impacts directly on our yield components you know kernel number and kernel weight so as we've started investigating this interaction between pea and zinc we really wanted to try to hone in on when we can be most responsive to in-season zinc foliar applications so over the last four years we work with uh, research cooperators to identify uh, areas that are either low in zinc, so zinc levels in your soil below one and a half ppm, or uh, P to zinc ratios that are that are very high in your soil, so P to zinc ratios above 15 to 1 ppm. And so we identified 12 locations over the last four years where we ran foliar zinc studies that were either low in zinc levels or had very high P to zinc uh, ratios, and we looked at applications of either smart trio or smart zinc between that V3 and V5 window. So across those 24 applications, we actually saw that 23 of those 24 applications had a positive increase on yield. And that average yield response to the application of either smart zinc or smart uh, trio across those locations increased yield by 8.6 bushels to the acre. The other thing that's really important to get these zinc responses is using the correct zinc sources. Uh, you know, if it's a soil application, we want to use a chelated, full, uh, fully EDTA zinc source to keep that available in the soil for crop uptake. Uh, but then if it's, um, you know, an in-season foliar application, we tend to get very high efficiency in terms of responses from Brandt Smart System products, whether it's Smart Zinc or Smart Trio, because that molecule is able to move that zinc past the cuticle on the leaf into the vascular tissues, the phloem, where we can get that to the growing point, whether that's the apical meristem or the developing kernels, depending on the time and season.